Help me bring supers back into the sunlight. We need to change people's perceptions about superheroes. And Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> so Incredibles 2. Brilliant film. Oh, thank you. I enjoyed you. it. Yeah. Um, so despite it being 14 years since the original, um, how easy was it for you guys to maintain the same style and heart that the first one has? Uh, I actually think it was pretty easy. We felt confident in that style, and, and uh, I loved the design of the characters from the first film. What's sort of different is that we were better able to realize what we wanted to uh, uh, the film to look like uh, uh, that long ago and we got close and we got closer than we ever should have been able to because we had an amazing crew on the first one but now we're able to do it the way we were intending the first one to look. Yeah, okay. the technology is so much better. It's more intuitive. It was easier to sculpt the characters so they matched the original sculpts and to articulate them so that their movement again is more intuitive and matches what Brad's looking for. Um, and also the artists are so much better. I right. mean, some of them have been there for at least 14 years, and then there are a bunch of new artists who've come into the studio who are really, really good. And inspired by those people's works. That's right. You know. Hello? Hey, honey. How are the kids? Everything's great. Is she having adolescence? And Jack Jack? <laughs> yeah. He's in excellent health. I know that you're a big fan of sequels? There's some of your favorite films as sequels? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a big fan. I would say that, <laughs> I would say that some of my favorite films are sequels and um, yeah, what would you, we'll leave it at that. What do you guys think is a successful formula then for a second movie? I think a successful formula is no formula. I think that, <laughs> that, that the more people try to break it down as if you're assembling uh, widgets or, or making Twinkies, I think that um, the films suffer. And I think that people that throw all that stuff away and try to get away from corporate filmmaking and, and have it be more personal, I think the films are better. Um, yeah. All of the best sequels have very strong visions that are not mm -hmm. company visions. Um, Coppola made uh, Godfather 1 and Godfather 2 in spite of uh, Paramount, you know, um, who didn't like Brando and didn't like Pacino and gave him a very hard time in the first film. Yeah. Um, and George Lucas owned Empire Strikes Back, so he could do it any way he damn well wanted, and, and uh, it's a wonderful sequel. So, to me, the best sequels are the ones uh, that are uh, still have uh, experimental uh, spirit and take some risks. Um, the second uh, Alien film done by James Cameron has a brilliant story idea in it um, that is to me even more powerful than the first film. Um, it becomes a film about motherhood in a very strange way, but it's a very strong film and, and that's because Cameron, I don't think you can tell Cameron how to make a film. You just support him or don't, but you don't tell him how to do it. Yeah, every one of these things is a custom job. Right? Mm. It's, you think, you know, the more films we make, the more we think we figured it out, and then we start the next one and we just go, uh-oh. I got a lot to learn <laughs> yeah. about how to yes. do this. Yeah. I think the only thing that you become expert at is how to make the film you just made. Yes. Like if you asked us to, to make Incredibles 2 right we now, could rock it. we would be so efficient. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't waste any time no, on... We can't apply that to Incredibles 3, no. unfortunately. Yeah, no. <laughs> or any other movie. Yeah, yeah. You're back, at, you're back at sea yeah. immediately when you start a new film. In fact, sequels, I think, are almost harder than original films in mm. certain ways because no, you have to avoid telling the, the first story again. You want to stay fresh. You have to avoid those, those tropes. And you want to be surprising. And, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and yet true to the characters that were in the first mm -hmm. one, so. You know it's crazy, right? To help my family, I gotta leave it. To fix the law, I gotta break it. You've got to, so our kids can have that choice. Thank you, young man. And talking of characters, the thing that makes, I think, Pixar and especially Incredibles films so great is the heart and the feeling and the characters in those. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite characters from these films? From Incredibles? Yeah. Um, you know, it sounds like a cop-out, but it's actually true. I am close to every single one of them. I, they, uh, 
are, I empathize with them, even the villains. I, I kind of, they occasionally make sense to me, even when they're <laughs> talking in a very twisted way. Um, yeah, uh, that's what I would say. I always have a different answer to this question <laughs> because I do love all of the characters. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, I love um, Evelyn Dever's style and her clothing. Um, I think she's super cool. Um, there are a lot of us who've been lobbying to have a, a clothing line developed. <laughs> well, Brent Imagiri, who did uh, the costumes in the film, I, I actually think you could, you could if you made high-end versions of those, they would be amazing things to wear. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we get some support for this idea. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Edna Mode collection, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, and my favorite is uh, Violet. I mean, I have two daughters, and I have a new uh, granddaughter. And I, the time when they were teenagers, my daughters, was a favorite time in my life, and she reminds me. Of it was during the first Incredibles. First session. Incredibles, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so. she's and my she's granddaughter's name is Violet. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>